Hi, my friend, it's Pat Sloan. I have several things today from uh, the Midnight Moon, and I have what you put on a label. I'm going to introduce you again to the ambassadors for Quilt Along with Pat Sloan, since a lot of you are new or sort of missed the intro a few months back. And let's see, another Q&A answer. Okay, no, <laughs> first, First, let's do Midnight Moon. Last week's Midnight Moon, and this week is another assignment. Then we have a bonus again. So last week's was the darting birds. That's these guys. And I did not do the largest darting bird. What I did was, uh, I'll, I'll use the last free one for that, which was the pumpkin. And these are from the uh, Summer Moon book. Here we go. It's from the Summer Moon book. Now the second block last week was Nonsense, which I think is just a funny name, but the block itself is so much fun to do, so much fun. It is amazing what images you can create putting together different types of blocks. It has quarter square triangles here on, and the, on the four spots here are quarter square triangles. And that makes that shape that goes around that center. Now I need to make more quarter square triangles and things because they are so easy to do. So I think there will be more coming up in my future. We'll do some in the sew along for the winter at the next block Wednesday. I definitely have to get some quarter square triangles in there because they are way more fun and way easier than people think they are. Okay, maybe you think they're easy, so that's good. I always think, oh, they're hard, but they're really not hard at all. <laughs> You're just taking two half square triangles and sewing them together and you get the block and trimming, super easy. Okay, now for this week we have the 4X and the log cabin. So the log cabin is another one that's dark. That's where I missed weeks ago when I was saying that the bat was fairly dark because nothing else had been dark yet. Well, the, the, the um, log cabin one has a lot of dark on it. So I am going to do um, all, all three sizes for both of those and then see what the next bonus block is and decide whether I drop, you know, that somewhere along the way there will be maybe one that, another one that drops out so that I can use it or I don't do. Okay, so that's the plan for the Midnight Moon. Uh, I did get great, great progress on this UFO. We're almost the end of the month and I am feeling a finish on this top, feeling it. This is um, the words to live by. Here's the finished quilt. Uh, so let me show you where, I, where I'm at with it. While I was making the um, words to live by, I went and was doing some sewing of these strips here, and I did a little video because oh, it was just heaven. I don't think there's anything quite as satisfying as taking these little groupings and getting them pressed. I don't know, where you can just do this. You just hold it up and you just sort of go along press them all the same direction. It's, it doesn't have to match anything, so they can just go all the same direction. They're not really gonna shadow much through that pink. I mean, I could be fussy, but you know, this is fun. This just feels great, like great sewing, great pressing. And so these are the last strips for the setting part of Words to Live By. I need to work on the, um, the center block. And once that is done, I can assemble that. I'm so happy. Ah, oh, that was so satisfying. So good. Let me know if you love doing this too. It's like, ah, oh, feels so good. So on the wall, these are not sewn yet, but they're units. So I have the units like this, and then there are half square triangles, and that's it. So that's sort of the side sashing. There's two side sashings and a cornerstone, four or two borders and a cornerstone, however you want to think about it, for those four blocks. Then there is the middle of the quilt. So this last saying is the very middle of the quilt, and I, have, I just have to sew that together. There, these are all units, so I've got all those units. So I need, need to sew that. It's a, basically a nine patch at this point. Looks so good. And then uh, after that comes the surround, which is basically is attached to the bottom of the upper block or this, you know, to, the, to these four blocks here, this unit. And that's the one where I substituted and put a pink stripe in there. So it'd be more like the rainbow and have some pink. And those are all sewn. And one of them has the block on here. So, you know, the ha there'll be two of them like this to get, to get that uh, unit. 
So that's how close I am. Then I just have to sew all those pieces. There's, I'll put a, maybe a little tiny, you know, maybe one and a half or two inch border all around the whole thing. When it's done, just a little bit uh, that I can just, you know, sort of secure all the outer edge. I just like doing that. And then this won't have a, another border. I forget the size of it. What is it? Six, 60. It's a 60 inch square. That's what I was thinking. So this is a 60 inch square, which is great, great, great size for me and what I want. Ah, oh, so love it. So love it. There were so many amazing hiking blocks from summer camp that I pulled a few of them to show you. So let's take a look. I want to first start with Blair's block, which was the first one from the tents because she shared that that when her dad passed away, she saved his shirts. And these blocks are going to be made with his shirts, including where he always got ink on them. You can see that on the green on the left and the um, bottom one in the middle of the ink spot. So I thought, what a wonderful way to use his shirts. Okay, so let's go on to the hike block. A few of these are gonna be groups like this first one. And this is Brenda's. Uh, this is just uh, really, really nice. I like the sort of more elegant palette of the bl blacks and grays. She's got a little arrow. She said she went to a lot of church camps. Colleen's has bikes, bikes, bikes. Aren't they fabulous? She did hike the Grand Canyon before she was 50, which was a goal. So that is uh, kind of what her memory is here for her block. Dorothy's has fish and um, look at the tracks, the animal tracks. And then she used a lot of different block uh, fabrics in the four patches. So for those of you who are thinking, how would that look? There you can see it. Laura Half Pint is doing, uh, I just love this sort of, um, you know, I guess that's the London fabric in the middle there. And then the plaid with the gingham. It all just looks so fabulous. Although she did confess she's not a she's not a hiker <laughs> julie's is cut some christmas fabric in the cars and the trees oh that's so cute going to get the christmas tree linda has done her borders her sashings it looks fantastic so for those of you who are getting ready to do it this way, which I am going to start, I think, for the next block, I will start doing sashings to get that done because there's a little bit of things you have to do to do the sashing. So it's nice to do it while you're sewing along. Lori's is beautiful. I love this green and then the yellow with the pops of red flowers, red, red, everything red. And of course that leads right into Marjorie's that uh, has red stripes. I love that stripe. That is so, such a cool effect. Okay, Najma's is got this neat floral. I love that floral. And then she did a strong black uh, uh, crossway on the blocks. And that is really neat. It just sort of pops that image out a lot, really, really strongly. Paula's is beautiful. Look at the butterflies. She's got a lot of butterflies showing, did a little fussy cutting there. And then her background, where a lot of us use the light, she had green. Pendle has all three blocks here in a family portrait. Uh, <laughs> this is the same fabric I used for our last sew along. It looks beautiful in these blocks. Cheryl has a pink flamingo and I missed the pink flamingo day the other day. Oh, there are so many days of the every every day of the year. There's so many things you could celebrate and I miss the pink flamingo day. So I'm going to have to write that down for next year. Somebody write me so I can make a pink flamingo block. Tracy has just darling. Look at this darling fabric with all the uh, clothes on the line. I had that fabric. I used it in a quilt and I love she has the plaid running down the middle. And our last one is from Vicki. Look at this fun fabric. Potatoes and eggplants and, and tomatoes. They're all uh, that realistic looking uh, fabric. And she said that she loves to garden. So this is just perfect. Let's, let's reintroduce, introduce you again to the ambassadors for Quilt Along with Pat Sloan. I, when I reached 250,000, not only did I lose one of my best friends in Cindy, uh, she was also someone who helped manage my group. Uh, so it was a bit, um, you know, it was lonely without her uh, to help when she, she passed away, for those of you who don't know, pancreatic cancer. <clears throat> so I wanted to do something and I've had moderator teams in the past. It's just been quite a long time. 
So I put a call out to the group that chats in the morning on our um, video releases, the morning chat group, because they're a very engaged group. There were people there who were also very active within the face group group because a lot of all, most of the moderation is done basically it's done for the Facebook group helping ambassadors are helping answer questions um, share things um, be sure that people get the information they need uh, and also helping to keep the environment safe so if somebody has gone off on the weeds on the topic where it's a neg gone negative which happens uh, they will be able to go in and delete those comments uh, and if there's some bad players that get in which does happen spammers and they get through the filters which we have many filters but if they still get through the filters uh, the the ambassador team has uh, said so they have some ability to also get rid of that or they can tag me and I can get rid of it so there we go. So that's that's sort of the purpose of the ambassador team. It's a great little group. We have our own little mini group so that we can communicate what's going on and what we're sharing. And they help me by taking a look at some of the things that we're doing for the projects and giving me feedback and um, support. So it has been wonderful. There are 14 people and me. And so I'm going to read you the names and I'm going to put up on the screen this little diagram. So we have uh, Lylene. Kathy, Bobby, LJ, or you might know her as Half Pint, or you might know her as Laura, Brenda, Greg, my husband, Dennis, which is Cindy's husband, who has also been an administrator and a friend for as, almost as long as I've known Cindy. He is also a quilter. Doris, we have New York Carrie and Pennsylvania Carrie. <laughs> <laughs> Kendall, who is with us from Australia. So he helps, Kendall helps in the evenings a lot uh, because during the day he's asleep, our daytime. Uh, we have Barbara or Life So So Crazy SEW uh, here on the chat in the mornings. Melissa and Suzanne. Suzanne is a an, an enabler, enabler extraordinaire. <laughs> Not that these other ones aren't so darn good, but I don't know. Suzanne's top of that list. <laughs> so thank you so much, dear friends. It is so wonderful to have this beautiful team. Um, and you know, everybody has a life. There's enough people that you, people can get in there basically at the scale they were there before. They were always very engaged people in the community. And so it's not really a lot of extra work because there's a lot of us to spread it around. So that's always good. And I had a couple other things here. Well, so, oh, so another question. This was from Sarah. And then we'll do the label. Uh, so Sarah asked me, do I ever gray out photos, take a photo and gray it out to look at the scale, to look at um, the lights and darks? And that's always a very good thing to do if you have the ability. I'm just going to show you on my phone. I'm going to call it a picture up on my phone and show you what graying out means. So here's a picture of the Secret Lives of Color block. And for your photos on your, um, your phone, you, it's, it's easy because most of your phones have an edit. So you see the edit, so I'm going to click edit. And when I click edit, it gives me some things to do. On mine, it has a filter. So see the word filter there? If I click filter, then what that does is it has overlays of different colorations. It might look, make it look old fashioned or old timey. And I'm just going to scroll there until I hit the gray tones. Okay, so now we're at gray tones, see them? So I can click any one of those because it's really not gonna matter. And there I have converted my block to gray tones. That lets me see, you don't even have to save it. This is lets you see if what you're doing has enough contrast. I think that's the primary reason that most people use the gray tone um, to go, okay, yeah, there is contrast. Whereas sometimes you might do that and to your eye, you can see the difference, but when you might do a grayscale, it might all be sudden be like very close together. And so that might be a place where you want to um, use some different fabrics. So that, that is a good question, Sarah. Thank you for asking. And the last thing all came about because B. Davis here at YouTube asked me, um, you know, as did many, many, many other people, which is why I did this, is what information do I put on a quilt label? This is a really, really good question. We talk about it, uh, make a label, make a label, and sometimes people will put just, you know, um, 
the person's name they're giving it to like you know Kim and that's it <laughs> for Kim love grandma um, that doesn't tell people anything down the road like down the road sometimes they forget which grandma was grandma and did we call her grandma or did we call her Nana um, and those other kids called her grandma you know I mean it gets can get confusing so I have a whole list and I put it in a PDF for you so I created a PDF and I have three quilts. I'm just gonna hold those quilts up quick and show you. But I did some, showed you the labels off of three of my quilts and uh, wrote the information down. What I would put would be like the name of the quilt. If the quilt has a name, like you, it might be the name of the pattern, you wanna put that there. It just might be that you named the quilt. Um, like a lot of people do that for competition or to enter it in a quilt show, you, you name your quilt. Um, the name of the maker, that'd be you. If you had people helping, if it was a group project, if it was a generational project, maybe your great-grandmother started it, then your grandma worked on it, your mom worked on it, and then you finished it. Put all those names on there. Who you're giving it to, and use their real name if you know it. Uh, the date finished, like I made a baby quilt you see here, and I said it was for baby Kova. <clears throat> because, you know, I'm being a little cheeky there, you know. I could wait and write this and, and put the baby's name, but I wanted to just have fun. And I'm putting the year so they'll know what year the baby was born. Uh, the day you finished it, if you have celebration dates, and maybe it was for an anniversary or a wedding or uh, graduation, um, retirement, put that date on there as well. Um, put the name of your long armor. If you had it long armed and you want to document that, uh, where you live, your city, your state, your country. And if you're shipping it, I highly recommend when you ship to put your email and your phone number on the labels. I have shipped hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of quilts and they, they have that. So like th this is one of the labels like here. I just put some duct tape over my phone number so we don't have everybody on YouTube uh, phoning me. <laughs> So there's some of the information. This is one of the labels that's on the picture in the pattern. So this is the, the Let's Go Sew pattern. Uh, here's the one that I did for Baby Kova, who Kova is the last name of the family that this is going to go to. So here is this quilt. And I used one of the cute labels that were on a panel that was given to me through there. And then the last label was one where, um, there we go. So it's a triangle label, one of my triangle labels. And this was a sew along we did a few years ago, which is Night Out from a book. Isn't that cute? This is the smaller version that I did for people who didn't wanna do the bigger one. Um, okay, so you can go to my website today and I did an email for this, so you'll get an email to print off the PDF for what to put on the label. Yes, oh, very, very good. So I'm so happy you were here. I love you. Thank you for being here in the Sloan Zone. I will see you online.